Welcome to another episode of Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. And I tell you, talking about serving, my next guest, Jeff Griffin, is the epitome of serving. He's got an incredible story. I'm excited to have him on. Jeff, welcome to the show. Oh, man, Steve, thanks for having me here. Speaking of service, servants, you know, I always say that every great man and woman of history is a man of service. And, and so thank you. Hats off to you, Steve. You are a great man of history and, and all you do and all you give. And it's an honor to, uh, to be a part of your platform. I appreciate that. And that's a great comment. I never thought about that, but you're right. They always come from a struggle, small or big, and they learn from that struggle to serve and help others, the, the good ones that succeeded. Um, let's start from the beginning. I know when we first met, you had a great story. I love it. I'm an ex-football player, have a family that played pro football. Tell me more about your story, the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. So for all your all your listeners and those who are watching as well, you know, I always talk about that, you know, the problem isn't the problem. Even though we can take our mess and turn it into our message, as my good friend Brad Jensen said, this, you know, the sober bodybuilder, um, you know, I like that. Um, but going back to this idea that the problem isn't the problem. We all have problems. You and I all have problems. And you know, I speak all over the world. And whenever I come out on stage, I address the elephants in the room about how good looking I am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about that. I, I, I know that's not true, so I can say that. But the elephant is I'm in a wheelchair. You guys can't see it. I'm sitting down right now. But uh, I, um, over nearly 30 years ago, I was up on some scaffolding in between a um, football season. My dream was to be a collegiate football player. And in between seasons, I, I I don't care what they tell you. They don't pay enough money to play football in college. And so I was scraping and I started my own business and was doing some construction. And I was up there in Napoleon Dynamite country in, in uh, Southern Idaho, other side of the border of Utah. We grew up in North Logan. And um. I fell 40 feet and landed on my feet, straight legged. My legs came up, my back came down and my L1 vertebrae exploded inside me, leaving me paralyzed from the waist down. Changed my life instantly, Steve. It, um, I went from six, one to four, seven Jeez. overnight. And I see things different figuratively and literally. And I've learned that different isn't always better, but better is always different. And if we want to make things better, we're going to have to think different. The reason why I share this is because a lot of us, going back to what I mentioned earlier, is we all look at our problems. We all, you know, we focus on our problems. And it's important to to learn from them. But the problem isn't the problem, Steve, because we all have problems. And what I like to say is, you know, every problem under the sun has a solution or it has none. If there be one, hurry and find it. If there be none, never mind it. Um, and so the problem isn't the problem because we all have problems. The problem is how we look at those problems. Do we look at those problems as challenges or do we look at those problems as opportunities? And, and so, you know, I didn't always look at my problems as opportunities. Um, and, and I learned some valuable lessons, you know, having to sift through my broken back and shattered dreams and, and, and so anyway, whenever I can, I, I like to address the elephant in the room. And, and that is, yeah, I'm in a wheelchair. That's, that's my problem. I can't hide it. I can't, the other thing I can't hide either is how good looking I am, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in a wheelchair and I'm like, listen, I may be physically paralyzed. And the doctors gave me a life sentence to never walk, stand and move my legs again. And I went from a very healthy, athletic young man to needing help to transfer from my bed to my chair and from my chair into the car to do, I couldn't, there, there was a lot of things that I could not do. And, you know, I entered into that sauna of self pity and I learned some things as I mentioned before. And, and so the elephant, as I mentioned, when I come out on stage is I may be physically paralyzed, Steve, and people can see that problem. But the biggest problem and challenge that I've seen is most of us, if not all of us, are paralyzed with the demons of doubt, fear, and complacency. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm not in your situation, and I know you get the sympathy and the pity, but how did you get past that struggle 
in your mind, because that's the most important thing. When that happened, that's what I want to hear too is, yeah, you had negativity, I'm sure. You just said all that. I had to have help with everything at a young age. What did Jeff do? Yeah, that's a great question. Because as I mentioned, you know, um, I believe that there's three Ds. They're at the foundation of every solution. And those three Ds are desire, dream, and do. And and, and what if we had more time, we could we could dissect what it is a desire is. We could take the and we could take a look at the anatomy of a dream, and then we could give some uh, you know concrete steps to do that will that will be repeatable, predictable, and um, you know achievable. And so those three Ds, desire, dream, and do, are at the foundation of every solution, in my opinion. And so, you know, I talk about the, the dream. Do you know what you want? Do you even know what you want? And and that's a lot of people have no clue what they want. They, they have no idea. And then they go through life and they end up where they are. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. And perhaps that might be the case for some people. Um, and and it, and it could have been a lot better than, than they thought it was. But I don't believe that. You know, we can live a life... Um, by design, or we could live a life by default. Mm, and if comment. you're not dreaming, you're living a life by default. You're just letting things happen to you. And so, uh, you know, I always talk about the, listening to that song that sings inside your soul. And and when was the last time you allowed yourself to dream, allowed yourself to open up the floodgates of imagination and and to and to think new thoughts, higher desires. And when was the last time you allowed yourself to weave that tapestry of dreams that's going to hang on somebody else's media, social media wall? Mm -hmm. And so this idea of a dream, you got to know, you know, you got to know what you want. You got to know your destination. You got to know the direction. You got to know where, where you want to go. And I love that because it's specific specificity or being specific. Uh -huh. You probably talk to people like I do is, hey, what's your dreams or goals? I think they're together. A goal is a dream to me. But they'll say, I just want more money or more clients or a bigger company. Uh -huh. But that doesn't get to the soul, like you said, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so, you know, to me, dreams are what we want and desperately desire. And goals are what we need to do in order to get there. A lot of people are like, hey, what's your what's your goal? And you're like, ah, I want to be a millionaire. I'm like, well, that's that's your dream, and that's your desire. Yeah. And so, what are you going to need to do in order to get there? And you're absolutely right. And, you know, so often we we don't know what we do, we don't know what we want, and so we look at other people and like, you know, that's what I want. That's what I want. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, you know, the the highest form of adoration is emulation. Mm -hmm. Yep. And 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 for me, the greatest emulator for me personally is the God in heaven, you know, my savior. And I truly believe that, you know, all things are possible when you include the great I am. Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, he he including him in my life has allowed me to open up those floodgates have, has allowed me to dream. And, you know, so going back to your question about, you know, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that when the door is closed or how do you deal with that when you don't even know what your dreams are, or how do you deal with it when you enter into that sauna of self pity or how do you know, how do you deal with that? When, when the foundation that you've built, you know, similar to my, my you know, the scaffolding, my ladder that I put up against that barn to try to, you know, paint the barn, you know, what do you do when it comes crashing down? And what do you do when your dreams are shattered? What do you do when you're, you, ex, you experience a major setback or a difficult challenge? What is your go-to? How do you get out of that sauna as you asked? And um, the easiest answer, the simplest answer is you have to flip the switch and think new thoughts. But how do you flip the switch? And we can keep on going down this road. Like, how do you flip that switch? How how do you do this? And of course, you and I know that that gratitude determines attitude. Yep. And so, if 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 you want to change your attitude, change the way you look at things. Become grateful for what you do have. 
and there was a question. Can I tell you a story, Steve, about Please how do. this happened? How I, how I flipped the switch and how I how I changed, um, you know, my mess into my message. Yes. So hopefully, those who are still listening and still watching, <laughs> um, that that this will be invaluable to them. But when I was in the hospital, they they no longer fed me in bed. I had to get out of bed and go to the to the cafeteria to get fed. And it took me half an hour to put my body brace on and eight of two nurses to get into my wheelchair. So it was a challenge. Everything I did was a challenge. It was just, you know. And so I was having one of those pity parties, the the worst one ever. I was I was wallowing in that syrupy, sticky son of self-pity. I'm like, hey, come on in. Enjoy, join me in this party, this pity party. And as I was rolling down the sterile halls of the hospital, just feeling sorry for myself, the tears started to percolate and then pour over and run down my cheeks. And I got to the cafeteria and I got my food. And you know how you feel miserable and you don't want to be around anybody when you're having those pity parties? You're like, just yeah. leave me alone. And here's the irony, Steve. That's when we need somebody the most. We try to run away from our problems when we need to really run to them and, and really get some help. We really need some help. Yeah. Three lies we tell ourselves. Three lies we tell ourselves. Lie number one, I'm not good enough. Steve's good enough, but I'm not good enough. John's good enough, but I'm not good enough. Jennifer, who's listening, is good enough, but I'm not good enough. But the truth is, is we all have the ability to achieve our dreams and desires. We all come from infinite intelligence. We all have that DNA of godness in us. Yeah. And, and so we have that ability. So so line number one is we're not good enough. Line number two is I don't have the, the tools or skills to do it. If everyone who's listening on their iPhone. Yeah. You know, we have more technology and more information, more resources <laughs> in the palm of our hands than the president of the United States did in 1992. Yeah. So it's not a matter of resources. It's a matter of resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. We have the tools. We have the skills. We just have to look inside. And then the third lie is I can do it on my own. We need help. Love that. We all yeah. need help. And so at that moment, I just wanted to be alone. I, did, I, don't, I just wanted to be left alone. So I got my food and I went to the corner of the cafeteria. I put my, my tray on the uh, table and I was flavoring my food with my tears when this tray plops in front of me and I look at him and he looks at me and I was about to tell him to go somewhere with, with some words that I won't use and repeat right here <laughs> but um, I, but uh, he, I looked at him and he looked at me and he asked me a question that changed my life forever and the irony of this this whole thing Steve is the man who was sitting across from me was a prisoner from the point of the mountain who was doing some rehab at the hospital because he was lifting weights and he had an aneurysm in his brain and it paralyzed the right side of his body. Yeah. So this prisoner asked the question that set me free from my prison. Wow. Wow. That's uh that's such a powerful story because other people I've talked to who struggled, it's one or two people. Like you said, you want to be alone with the, there's one or two people that change your life that show you the way that light the light I love that you said that because I've had other guests the same thing. And it's, it's become an ongoing theme to me. Listen to people, bring people community into your life. Don't shy away from it. Right. Yeah. Well, your company's called Griffin motivation. And I can see why now, because right now I'm motivated. I'm sure your audience, you're motivated as well. You should be if you're breathing. Oh, let's talk about Griffin motivation. I know where it came from your struggle. And you've built up this incredible company that you're helping so many people. Let's talk about that. Yeah, you betcha. Um, you know, I was a teacher for 17 years in the high school and college level. I have my master's in education and curriculum. I created a peer-to-peer -peer, um, leadership program that has been recognized at the by the United Nations. You know, our, our first inaugural event, you know, event was in Kathmandu, Nepal. And, um, and so my business, you know, I have the best job ever, Steve. I would say I have the best job it. ever. I do. You know, I get to help high level leaders increase their bottom line. A lot of times that bottom line means increase 
how much money they're making, their company's making. Other times, that bottom line is, I, you know, I'm, I'm going in there and I'm helping these companies with their culture or with their attitude or with their um, level of belief. And and the way I do that is with a transformational message and a life altering experience. You know, we go in there and we just we we eliminate all the excuses. In fact, I, you know, I went to one company. They had 60 relationship managers that, uh, you know, their target was to bring in 400 million new dollars. They had never done it before. <laughs> they didn't know how to do it. So I came in, I shared the three Ds and I gave them this transformational message. And after we were done, the VP came up to me and says, Jeff, thank you so much for eliminating all of our excuses. There's no reason why we can't hit our target. So 12 months later, I called up her secretary and he's like, Jeff, I don't know what uh, she told you. But um, we ended up with 530 million this year. So that that's that's what we do. That's what we do, Steve. Is we 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 go in, we help high level leaders increase their bottom line with a transformational message and a life altering experience, and uh, and it varies for each each company. It varies for each individual. You know, we do some coaching, we do some workshops. Uh, it it all depends on. The, the individual's needs and their challenges, right? Like I said, the problem isn't the problem because yeah. we all have problems. Yeah. And one thing that I've learned, Steve, is that the biggest constraint or the biggest problem or the biggest challenge, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, the biggest constraint is lack of belief. Amen. And, and it sounds simple. I know it's not. But really, any company can do this, right? No, absolutely, absolutely. And and the and the question they need to be asking themselves is, how much is this costing me? How much is this costing us? You know, again, going back to those three lies, I, I can do it myself. I can do it myself. No, no, really, you can't. You need somebody else to come in and and shine the light on what you're doing. Because a lot of times, people will hear your message and will hear your your song that you're singing and then they tune out because they hear it all the time and so they need somebody else to come in and sing the same tune or the similar tune what you've been what you've been singing and then shine a light on what you're doing and, and validates what you're doing or making those small adjustments some things that you may not be seeing and uh you know these last two years i had an opportunity to really work with a company that i had spoken to twice and um we they were hit they hit a ceiling of fifty million, you know the 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 owner's son took took it from five million to fifty and that's his, he just he was hitting the ceiling couldn't go any higher, and we were able to implement some of these gold nuggets that I've discovered as I've sifted through my broken back and shattered dreams and discovered these flux of gold and and the, the company in two years went from fifty million to one hundred and thirty. Well, it's interesting. You, it reminds me of the story when you're talking about you come in as a, a different voice. It's the old phrase, mom tells me to do something. I go talk to my teacher who says the same thing, and I do it because the teacher said, not mom. That's kind of what you're saying, right? Oh, same absolutely. Absolutely. There's somebody else uh, coming in and saying what you've been saying or trying to say. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. That's pretty simple. But again, you have to have that awareness as an owner, CEO to see that, correct? That's mm -hmm. something you have to, and that's what you do on top of the workshops and things that you do. Um, I, I, I love that. What um, what has been your most exciting story of what you do? You've told me some two good stories and results. You got just one that's a blows you out of the water type of you that you did that the company you know got a good result from. Well, one of my one of my most favorite stories was um, heading over to Sweden. In in 2019, you know, I spoke over there at the same time that uh, President Obama and Gwyneth Paltrow spoke. Um, we were in two different places, but it was the same time that they spoke in Sweden. <laughs> but uh, so I went over there to the um, Eighth World Congress in Mind Training. I don't know if you've heard the the name Lars Erik Unestal. You know, he is the father. He's the pioneer of mind training. He invited Formula race car drivers, premier soccer league coaches, gold medalists, um, professors all over the world with, you know, PhDs and other names and, and letters before their names. And uh, he even had a Nobel nominee there and a couple of Olympic mind training coaches. And I was just going to go over there and share 
in a workshop some of these things that I've discovered and, and found. And then on my way across the pond, uh, they asked if I wanted to keynote. And uh, I'm like, absolutely. So they gave me 30 minutes, but the gentleman in front of me took five of my minutes. And so after the second standing ovation, I was telling him to sit down. And I'm like, we still got some, we still have some information to share with you guys. And after the third standing ovation, at the end of my speech, Lars Eric Gunnestal, I had my arm around his shoulder and he was looking at me and I was looking at him and in a tear and with a tear in his eye rolling down his cheek, he looked at me, he says, Jeff, thank you so much for showing us in 25 minutes what we've been trying to teach these last 40 years. My gosh. Wow. Well, that's a powerful story. See, yeah, that's and, incredible. And with and something I failed to mention too, Lars Eric Unistal, you may not have heard of him, but you might have heard of Charles Garfield, who he partnered up with over here in the United States. Charles Garfield was involved with the Apollo project. Charles Garfield was the one who coined the phrase peak performance. And so here you have a man who's working with a man who's who's you know impacted a lot of people. And and that was that that was a great testament there for me and and the work I have been doing these last 27 years. Michelle Gagne was in the audience. He was the Canadian Olympic mind coach who uh, Malaysia hired to work with some of their athletes. Malaysia got their first gold medal in 2016 because of the work of Michelle Gagne. And um, he came up to me afterwards. He's like, Jeff, you are 1% of the 1%. I have to work with you. And so, uh, so that experience over there in Sweden was was a great um, experience for me. It was r really validating for the work that I've done, am doing, and, and, and continue to do. And I just love, I just love helping people overcome their paralysis, their mental paralysis of fear, doubt, and complacency. And it works. It's consistent. It's predictable. And uh, it's repeatable and it's simple, as you said. You keep weren't using the word simple. When I went and trained with the Navy SEALs back in 2019, they're like, Griff, it's simple to be a Navy SEAL, just not easy. <laughs> and these principles that I'm giving you are yeah. very, very simple. They're just mm -hmm. not easy. But they're but if you put them in the right place in the right time and 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 uh, and you have a, a simple plan laid out, your chances of success have increased exponentially. And we see that success. We see the needle move all the time. And I just love to, to give back and to serve. And, and so I appreciate this opportunity to, to be on your podcast, to be on your YouTube channel. To, and it's easy to look good, Steve, sitting on the shoulders of giants. And, and so I appreciate this opportunity to, to share just a few things with you and your audience. And I've learned a lot too. I know the audience has learned. And, and when you just said all that, the word do comes to my head because of what you said. You can have the dream, in it, but if you're not doing it, which is probably a big step people don't do, you could give you could give me the biggest plan or a peak performance guy like this gentleman. If you don't follow through with it, it means nothing. You've just wasted your money or wasted your time. And, and I love that because the do, I think, is missing so much in people. Uh, what's your favorite? Uh, you wrote a book, right? I did. Didn't we talk about? Let's talk about your book because I like to have people talk about. There it is, impossible, Jeff Grisson. Oh, this is fantastic! Right there. In fact, it looks like at first glance it's impossible, but if you look a little closer, there's a little apostrophe in there. I'm possible. So you know this idea of changing the impossible into the impossible, um, changing the impossible into the possible by just doing a few things. And those three things are desire, dream, and do. And um, that book, I, they're not chapters, they're mile markers. Because I have little invitations at the end of each mile marker um, for you to do, to do something. And the very, very first thing that you're getting is, is in the intro. You know, the, There's the picture of Mount Everest, which was deemed to be impossible to climb. But now anybody with the right desire, the right guide, and the right equipment can get to the top. And, and I believe it's the same way in life. And, and so um, in the very, very first front part of the book in the intro, it's the possibility principle. And, you know, I talk about the 3Ds being the foundation. The possibility principle is the footings. It's the footings that the foundation sits on. And the possibility principle is the most simple thing out there. 
And we just have to be reminded and we have to, you know, remember that inch by inch is a cinch, yard by yard is hard. But basically what the possibility principle will do for you is will help you take your dreams and desires and match them up. Because if they're not matched up, those demons of doubt, fear, and complacency are going to come in and, and, and they're going to constantly creep in there and they're going to conflict with each other. But the pos the possibility principle will help you solidify those dreams and desires. The possibility principle will also help you understand what success is and what the opposite of success isn't. And um, and the opposite of success is not failure. Because I've never met anybody who hasn't failed their way to success. And so okay. the possibility principle, you know, teaches, you know, gives you permission to um to fail. You know, because failures at first are triumphs at last, as long as you just don't quit. Mm. And there's there's three other things that the possibility principle will will give you. And, and so, you know, it, those who are listening and those who want to grab a copy, I have two books. One's called Endless Possibilities, the 90-day um, recipe for world record results. Um, and this one's I'm Possible, Desires You Can Do. If you purchase both of them, we'll, we'll eliminate the uh, the shipping cost. So you buy two, eliminate the shipping cost. But to make it even more attractive for the listeners who are still here, who are still listening, <laughs> who have a desire to, to get that, if you use the coupon code LOVE, we'll knock off 50%. So not only are you getting two books for the price of one, but you're not even paying for the shipping as well. That is an audience. That is an offer. And I'm glad you mentioned the second book. I'll put this in my book directory. But remember, 50% off. I am going to take advantage of that because you've motivated me in this show. I, I, I'm like, my skin is, is tingling right now because it really is simple. And you made it sound simple. There is work to do. But to me, yes. work is not simple. It's just action. Yeah. Steve, you do this today. Steve, tomorrow you do this to get the to the three Ds. Um Audience, you see why I had him on the show. This is a servant mentality. This is a servant heart. And he's financially doing well. It's okay to be a server and make a lot of money. What do you do with that money and how it works with you? That's the key. That's what I appreciate about you. I know you're doing quite well. You went through the struggle. You're in a wheelchair. But I tell you, if you didn't tell me with you talking to me, and audience, once you hear this, you probably thought the same thing. If you never said he was in a wheelchair, you never would because your mindset is I'm a walking, talking, powerful man. Thank you. And praise the Lord to you and amen to you. God bless you for that. I thank you so much for being on this show. Uh, I'm going to watch this over and over because I, if I need to be motivated, I'm going to watch this show. And I hope you do audience come back and watch Jeff again. Let's leave the audience. Uh, you left so many great nuggets. You got one more nugget in you that you can leave them that could help them grow even further. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the quote from Vince Lombardi said that man cannot dream himself into character. He must hammer and forge one for himself. We can desire all we want. We can dream, dream all we want. But as you mentioned, Steve, we must do, we must get up and do one of those things, maybe getting out there and purchasing my book, or it might be to get out there and serve somebody, or it might get up there to flip the switch, just flip the switch, right? When, when your lights go out or your breaker, breaks you know we don't throw a temper tantrum and says oh my gosh i can't do this my lights went out we just go down and we just flip the switch it's a simple it's a simple thing just like that boom you flip the switch and um one way to to keep the breaker from from breaking consistently and constantly and all the time is to do the daily dime all the time the daily but the daily dime is so simple it's five minutes in the morning five minutes at night it is being quiet, being still, meditating, and being conscious about what you want to be. Not necessarily what you have to do, but what you want to be and who you want to be. And um, the daily dime all the time. If if you If you guys can figure out how to do that, Holy cow, exponential growth, compound growth. Um, you're going to slay those demons in no time. And and again, it's simple, just not easy. But it, it, but it is easy. If you just take it an inch by inch, inch by inch is a cinch, Steve. Yard by yard is hard. I'm going to leave you for that. <laughs>